hello and welcome back to Data News After Week. You know how it goes by now. This is the video where we take all the little news stories that have been floating around the world right now involving data, or at least this week, and we cram it into one single video. Probably the biggest uh, bit of information this week. Definitely something that a lot of people looking at SSD have gone, what? It is the Samsung 990 Pro. That's right. The 990 Pro has sort of been leaked or outed. We've got a whole article. Again, you're looking at it here on screen, linked in the description. And all of this can be traced back to this gentleman here on Twitter that noticed a new entry and a couple of new part numbers suddenly appearing on the kind of registration site there of uh, PCIe technology there. To gain a lot more detail, if you go through the article, you can uh, sort of scroll on down and find the PCI uh, SIG as kind of a registration where uh, partners uh, can kind of register their products to be certified against certain different uh, revisions and technology. And when these appeared on there, it's kind of some backwards tracing of uh, the Model ID and a lot of uh, Samsung's own conventions of Model IDs kind of led way to this 990 being outed as their PCIe Gen 5 SSD. That's right. So... Uh, just a backpedal just a little bit there. Currently at the moment we are in kind of the kind of the, the hot spot of PCIe Gen 4. That is SSDs that can reach uh, just above 7,000 megabytes per second. There's a lot on the market and it's quite spread across. It's the one that's used in most modern PC architecture for gaming and of course the latest generation of consoles. Now Gen 5, uh, which is taking advantage of PCIe Gen 5 architecture of the lanes there, was kind of tipped to be launching, if not commercially, then at least on a smaller scale commercially, in spring-summer 2022. But because of effects of, of things like the pandemic, uh, the effects of changes on the supply chain, and of course the ever-present hardware shortages, despite lots of PCIe Gen 5 SSDs being revealed at trade shows like CES and other throughout the year, and uh, Computex as well, of course, a lot of these SSDs have yet to arrive. And a lot of that comes down to the uh, motherboard manufacturers not really making their products available either. And the ones that are, are extortionately overpriced. Now, this is not the first Gen 5 SSD that Samsung have put out there. Indeed, CES this year, we talked about it on News of the Week, the PM1743 was their first entry into Gen 5 SSDs, uh, at least from Samsung. And this Gen 5 uh, Samsung SSD was a U.2 um, or um, uh, an, an SE drive there, with reported performance of up to 14 gigabytes per second there. Now, the, that is read performance there, and that is still based on that uh, kind of external SAS architecture there. But a lot of people are wondering if the architecture and the controller and the details of this are what we're going to see kind of moved over, in, at least in the uh, production level, onto a Gen 5 SSD from Samsung. Now, on top of that, there was also kind of information this week that uh, uh, was purported to suggest that Samsung are now working on 200 layer NAND. They've already got the, the 176, and we have already talked about this on a previous News of the Week video, but more information is starting to land. I'm linking to all of the articles They Do check out this Blocks and Files article. But all of this is kind of gearing up towards the Samsung 990. Unlike the previous generation, or uh, the PCIe Gen 4 generation, and how it kind of started slow and built up in its lifetime, Samsung seems to be targeting high performance very early doors. Now, before we move on to the next story, it is worth highlighting uh, why Samsung would be in a little bit of a rush to launch a Samsung 990 Pro SSD. Uh, rewind time to when the uh, Samsung 980 Pro was first revealed. We've got an article here from Hot Hardware. And on Hot Hardware here, you can see as you scroll down, uh, it was launched, or at least revealed, I should say, at January's uh, CES 2020 event. That was just before the pandemic really took hold uh, globally. Now, uh, when they did that, the PCIe Gen 4 generation was already kind of out there. It had been around for almost a year at that juncture. And at that point, there'd already been quite a few brands that had released their Gen 4 uh, SSD. None of them were hitting the 7,000 megs. They were all uh, 5,500 over 3,500 type SSDs. But Samsung decided to 
basically produce their better tier SSD. But unfortunately, again, because of the pandemic and lots of other factors, their SSD wasn't launched until later in 2020, at September, October time, much like the WD. And the result was, even though they brought the fastest SSD to market, that delay allowed lots of other brands to catch up. And although if they had launched this SSD sooner in the year, arguably the pandemic would have limited its consumption by the public, um, at the same time, that longer release cycle allowed lots more SSD vendors and controller manufacturers like Fizon and NAND uh, producers as well to catch up. And the result was that the 980 Pro, for the big splash that it made when it was released, it wasn't as long lasting as they might have liked, with lots of Fizon based and InnoGrit SSDs arriving within three to four months of this release arriving on the scene. So you can see why Samsung this time around wants to get ahead of the game. They want to get ahead of everyone and get their commercial grade 990 Pro out there first, much like they did with the original 960 Pro. And now I've really gone into this story in a lot of detail, but genuinely it's going to be very intriguing how fast things are going to move now that the goalposts for PCIe Gen 5 have been moved slightly along. Next up, another new product kind of bubbling slowly to the surface, a couple of new Synology rack mounts. Very early days on this information. Again, as always, links in the description. I've done an article over on NAS Compares here. And this regards two highly scalable uh, rack mount devices, part of the Synology SA series, the SA6400 and the SA6200. Now, these two rack mounts uh, you know, aside from generally being quite intriguing insofar as they can be, they can have eight more expansion devices added to them uh, to break quite substantially the petabyte barrier of storage, getting close to two petabytes if you go down the road of their uh, latest 18 TB release drive. But what's really intriguing is the, uh, that these systems are running on AMD EPYC um, uh, 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 CPUs there inside, which is hugely significant. This is the first time we're seeing this particular CPU feature on a Synology platform. We have seen it on the QNAPs uh, prior, and it is a big old jump up from the Xeons they were using up to this point. Not so much the Xeon Silvers that we saw on some of the flash stations there, but certainly when you compare against the Xeon Ds, they're in the um, SA3200 and SA30. Um, for uh, 3600 I should say it is just a giant leap up in terms of overall power um, core utilization thread utilization especially and just the architecture now these systems are going to be arriving with the ability to go up to a terabyte of memory I believe across 16 slots uh, is it 16 or 8 slots I'm going to go back to my own article there um, but again there's not a tremendous amount known about this uh, device outside of initial leaks online now i mentioned leaks online it's because again these model ids have started appearing on different eastern websites and indeed russian websites as well and a lot of it comes down to uh let's find it on here have they removed it they may have removed it from this page uh, originally there was the rx1223 which has seemingly been removed from these pages since uh, my original coverage of it and this was a 12 by expansion which then led back to the uh, kind of reveal of these other devices there and as you can see they've appeared on there thanks to a lot of that kind of overspill of showing off those rack mounts there now again what this means uh, for the existing SA series I can't tell whether these are refreshes or additions to the lineup um, uh, there is I know there are kind of hardware shortages out there of certain components that might have facilitated this but there's no confirmation on that um, but I would like to hope these are going to live alongside them because I think the SA series, this highly scalable storage uh, area of Synology's portfolio, doesn't have enough entries into it. And I think if they scale the pricing accordingly, that could be really intriguing to boot, uh, bolster that range of solutions. Another thing I will highlight, and again mentioned in other videos, um, we do have a running tally of uh, Synology 2023 uh, confirmed releases, rumors, predictions, everything that's getting confirmed and, or eventually denied or uh, undercut, uh, being added over time to an article here linked in the description. It covers everything that we've seen highlighted so far in rumor or confirmed form. So I do recommend checking that out. There's lots of interesting stuff being listed on there and we do regularly update that as much as we can. So I recommend checking that out.
And moving over to QNAP, there's a few little things bubbling to the surface there. Seriously, we're starting to see post-pandemic uh, kind of supply lines and uh, release windows and roadmaps slowly starting to really speed up here. Now, uh, with QNAP, what we're seeing is a sudden splurge of new stuff that we've known about for a while hitting shelves. Now, one of them is this dual port 100 gigabit ethernet card. Now, I will say very little I, uh, was known about this card, at least to me, and this has started arriving on a lot of their product pages. This is a PCIe Gen 4x16 upgrade card, as we're seeing more solutions arrive with PCIe Gen 4, which makes me very intrigued, by the way, with whatever's coming in the next month or two, um, because they wouldn't release cards like this without the facility of those upgrades. And I, even though there have been a few U2 and Flash servers that are PCIe Gen 4 enabled, I would still argue that there's still not enough to justify this card, which means hopefully QNAP's going to double down on this in the 2023 or even late 2022 period. But uh, a 100 gig dual port card here is insane. So that's uh, a potential 20 gigabytes of external storage output there. Now, again, thanks to PCIe Gen 4, and it's a Gen 4 times 16 card, that means you do have uh, a potential 32 gigabytes of transmission available to you there. So there's plenty of excess to go on. This card, of course, is going to be backwards compatible, but the backwards compatibility is going to mean if you use it in a 3x16 slot, that's only going to give you a potential 16 gigabytes of bandwidth, which means this may hamper the card ever so slightly there. Now, I mentioned that this was part of a slew of products there. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because QNAP has uh, made available globally now a, a lot of their new uh, kind of discs, uh, not disk station, the whole oh, Freudian slip, uh, a lot of their desktop solutions there. We've already talked about the 410 and the 410X, those tiny little uh, 2.5 inch uh, four bay systems. But now we're starting to see finally the TS464 and 664 globally available for purchase finally after talking about it for ages. Uh, on top of that, there's a couple of others. So again, the 464 is now appearing for sale on a lot more outlets. But now we're starting to see the 453. E solution. Uh, this is utilizing a J6000 Celeron processor there in the background alongside uh, 8 gig of non upgradable memory. So at least it arrives with 8 gig, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on board. And again, M2s inside. This is a lovely little middle ground between uh, their portfolio. And on top of that, there is the appearance of the TS462, another Intel based. Uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet NAS system here that fleshes out that 4-bay portfolio very, very well. Again, it has PCIe slots inside a lower generation because of the CPU, but again, an N4000 CPU to accompany the N6, uh, the J6000 and the N5000 CPU in this product family. So um, QNAP have really fleshed out that new prosumer 4-bay setup there, and it's going to be really intriguing to not only compare all these, but hopefully work on a buyer's guide for you guys very, very soon. And finally, a classic data news of the week story. Sometimes I get uh, the odd little notification in my email box and I go, well, that's not true now, is it? And I've got to be honest with you, despite being August, as soon as this appeared on my radar, immediately it went April 4. You can tell from that title there, Janet Jackson had the power to crash laptop computers. And then you realise it's on Microsoft's own blog. And then you realise it's from Raymond Chen. So quite highfalutin. Long story short... This is to do with the fact that um, back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, a lot of a lot of Windows XP systems and the way they ran, they were utilizing standard class 5400 hard drives, quite, you know, bit, relatively bare bones architecture by today's standards. And long story short, it appears that they identified that having this particular Janet Jackson song play, which is at 60 hertz, which resonated um, with the same vibration, um, uh, like um, resonic um, frequency, with the hard drive, it not only caused the whole system to be begin to crash, but also surrounding computers begin to crash. Now, again, as I read this the first time, I was like, well, this is an April Fool's story that's going out of hand. And then you realize it has its own CVE entry. And again, certain 5400 OEM hard drives shipped with laptop, laptops in approximately 2005 allow physical proximity attackers to de de cause denial of service, a device malfunction and system crash via a, reson a resonant frequency attack from an audio signal from Rhythm Nation music video. There's even a link to the blog post there. So it is 
pretty legitimate. Now, in preparation for this story, as the more I read into this, what I really hoped for this News of the Week video was a big graphic to show you on screen about what resonant frequency looks like. The problem is, there is no real legible graph that I can show you, unfortunately, there. But luckily, if you do want to learn more about this, because obviously, because of YouTube, I can't play this song. And if anyone is watching this video on a 2005 laptop, then more for you anyway. But I recommend checking out the Bleeping Computer article. They go into a lot more detail than a bunch of outlets that have covered this story up to this point. Um, so again, do check that out on there. But this has been Data News of the Week. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, next week, we will be looking a lot more at that 850X um, uh, SSD from WD, along with some stuff there on Enterprise and Pro Series hard drives. Ultimately, why does one cost more than the other? And how come sometimes you can get an Enterprise dry drive for less than a Pro Series drive? So stay tuned for that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time.